The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.thebenjamindixonshow.com to register for our blog and join the Progressive Army. Biden. The accuser, her name is Tara Reid, tells CNN that the alleged incident happened in 1993 while she was working as an aide in Biden's Senate office. She is claiming that she was delivering Biden a duffel bag and says that Biden had her up against the wall in a corridor uh, on the Hill and violated her with his fingers. Now, CNN has now, has now spoken on the record with her former neighbor, who says Reid told her about the allegation within a few years of the alleged incident. Biden's campaign says untrue. Never happened. Is this a credible allegation? I believe that women deserve to be heard, and I believe that they need to be listened to. But I also believe that those allegations have to be investigated by credible sources. The New York Times did a deep investigation, and they found that the accusation was not credible. I believe Joe Biden. I believe that he is a person who has demonstrated that his love of family, his love of our community, has been made perfectly clear through his work as a congressional leader and as an American leader. I know Joe Biden, and I think that he is telling the truth and that this did not happen. I swear. um, Well, that was the voice of Stacey Abrams, um, VP hopeful, um, talking about Tara Reid, whose allegations have started to get major coverage from all the major outlets. And so now people are finally being asked about it. And um, we see her responses that she um, she believes Joe Biden and that it did not happen. And she makes a claim there that the New York Times cleared, uh, did an investigation and cleared Joe Biden. But that's absolutely not the case. Um, BuzzFeed uh, uh, obtained talking points um, from the Biden campaign. And this is what um, the talking point said. Here's the very first talking point from the Biden campaign said, quote, the New York Times did weeks of extensive investigative research talking to nearly two dozen former Biden staffers from the 1990s, including those who worked directly with Mrs. Re- with Miss Reed. Here's what they found, quote, no other allegation about no other allegation about sexual assault surfaced in the course of reporting, nor did any former Biden staff members corroborate any details of Mrs. Miss Reed's allegations. The Times found no pattern of sexual misconduct by Mr. Bi- Biden. So the very first thing she says, uh, Stacey Abrams, is going with that talking point that the New York Times cleared. She actually one upped it. The New York Times cleared it. The man, which it did not do. I don't know how long of an episode I can do today. Because you guys know above anything else, I can't deal with the bullshit and the disingenuousness, the lies. I mean, the uh, what's true? What are we going to do? I mean, like, I get political expediency, but I don't get selling your soul for political expediency. And the Me Too movement is dead, completely dead from... Stacey Abrams just saying this to Lisa Milano, who's been on this forever. She's she's flipped on this a long time ago to um, uh, one of the founders uh, of the movement. They are all backing away from hashtag me too on behalf of Joe Biden. And if we were just talking, I mean, here's the thing. I don't put up with the Democrats when it comes to Medicare for all. Do you think I'm going to put up with them when it comes to them turning their backs on a movement that actually was trying to do some good? In order to protect a man who doesn't have enough working functioning digits to actually be able to sit in an interview and not inadvertently admit to doing it. I mean, they're really selling their souls for a man who has not enough brain capacity to not get himself in trouble and confess to doing it. This is sad. This is beyond sad. This is pathetic. And it's not, I mean, I, the soundbite is from Stacey Abrams, but it's far from just Stacey Abrams. It's everybody. Hillary Clinton. I, I mean, she did this in, she did the town hall, whatever thing with Bobber. <laughs> I'm, I'm in, I'm in Joe, I'm in Joe Biden land. So you're going to hear words like malarkey and thing of Bobber, right? She did the little thing with Bo- Joe Biden yesterday. He fell asleep in the middle of it. And all of this in order to beat Donald Trump, do you understand how do you pick poison and think it's going to heal you? 
Joe Biden is literally the person who's going to lose. And you guys are selling your souls on behalf of a man who can't even beat Donald Trump. As much as Donald Trump needs to be beaten. I'll get to that bastard in a few minutes and everything that's going on with them trying to force the reopening of the economy. So there's plenty of there's plenty of crappiness to go around. There's plenty of B.S. crappiness to go around in this country. We are led by sociopaths. We are led by disingenuous, grifting bastards on both sides of the aisle, both Democrat and Republican. But it's something extra special when the people that you've been in league with for the for most of your political life, when they turn out to be uh, just as much disingenuous, grifting sons of bastards as the Republicans are. I think it you have to understand when you find out it's your friends that betrayed you. That's who you have far more venom for. Yes, Donald Trump needs to be removed from office. In fact, someone needs to go sneeze on all the Republicans in this country and help rid us of these medicine priests. Politically speaking, obviously, let's listen a little bit before I get in trouble. Let's listen a little bit more to Stacey Abrams as she uh, explains away why she's going to support Joe Biden and why she wants this VP spot and how far she's willing to go with it and for it. So in, in 2018, you tweeted it was shameful that Brett Kavanaugh's Supreme Court nomination was being rushed forward and survivors of violence like Christine Blasey Ford deserve to have their voices heard. Are you applying a different standard now? Not at all. <laughs> I believe then and I believe now that women deserve to be heard because too often they are not. Oh, and Tara mm. Reid deserved to have her story okay. listened to and investigated. What was happening to Christine Blasey Ford was that there was no investigation. There was a rush to move the conversation forward so that no investigation Mm -hmm. was conducted. And as I said, I believe that there was those allegations needed to be investigated. And I believe that the New York Times and subsequent reports support what the Biden campaign has said. And I believe Joe Biden. So you said you've heard her. You've heard enough. You don't believe her. You believe Joe Biden. No, what I'm saying is that the New York Times investigation of her allegations, the New York Times investigation does not support the accusations against the vice president. I'm sorry. Listen, as a person. uh, Yeah, I hate that. I hate starting sentences like that because people always say that shit Um, as a as a black man or, you know, as a single father or whatever. You know, people always try to qualify their statement. But as a person who decided years ago that it was probably best for the national conversation for us to turn this paradigm on his head where I listen, I'm sorry. We grew up in a generation where women could not report because no one would believe them. And especially, I mean, they wouldn't report with little lame dudes. Uh, forgive the ableism, little cornball ass dudes. There you go. That's a better substitute. Cornball ass dudes from around the way, they would report because they didn't want the they, they first of all, they didn't want to become victimized twice because the system always victimizes women twice when it comes to sexual assault. Now, what do you think they would do in the case of a powerful senator? So it has been the case in this country and not just powerful senator, but powerful businessmen, powerful politicians in general. Uh, uh, look what happened with the Clarence Thomas. I mean, this is this. So when me too came out, while you could see it had some problems in terms of, uh, blanket statements and, uh, rush to judgment. What I appreciated about the me too movement was that it finally flipped it on his head and put the pressure on men to be like, Hey, chill the hell out. Stop being so rapey. Stop sexually assaulting because you know why? Because people are going to believe women first. I'm sorry. That's that's a good thing. That's a good thing in order to flip whether whether or not it's a good thing in terms of due process. I'll let all of you get in the comment section and argue about that. But flipping this thing on this head where men could not just go around and feel free to do this because they knew Nobody would do anything about it and no one would ever hold them accountable. The Me Too movement helped start the process of flipping that on its head where you had to be extra careful, extra mindful. Hell, I started going back and and taking a census of all of my encounters and wondering exactly if any of them had I crossed the line. 
And that's not a bad thing in a society where it has been the exact opposite, where men could get away with anything and nobody asked a question. I was a dumbass who actually believed that these people meant what they said. And here we are. They're just throwing it all away for a man who has to eat mashed potatoes because his dentures are going to fall out. (laughs) Not that the age is the thing. I'm an asshole. It's not that the age is the thing. It's that he is so, he is so incompetent at this stage in his life. He is incapable at this stage in his life. And he is going to lose to Donald Trump no matter how much they inject him with whatever they injected him with before he debated Bernie Sanders. He's not going to beat Donald Trump. And these people are selling their souls, not only their individual souls, but they're selling out an entire movement. And I have to ask the question, the terrible question, how difficult will it be for women now? There is no Me Too movement. How difficult will it be? Because it's not like, I mean, don't get it twisted. It's not like men men are going to say, oh, the Me Too movement is gone. Let me go and rape some more. No, what's going to happen is that the conversation is just dead. And nobody is going to talk about these things anymore because nobody is going to believe that the people who are promoting it actually mean what they said. And that creates a culture in itself. This is horrible. This is horrible. And and this is just like, and again, it is not just Stacey Abrams. It's all of these people, all of these people in the name of supporting Joe Biden, ultimately in the name of keeping out Bernie Sanders, but that's a side comment. That's a side conversation. The truth of the matter is, is that they have poured everything in. I tell you what, if a, I, I, Bernie Sanders really needs to unendorse Joe Biden at this point. Let them, let them lie with their demons. Let the Democrats win with their demons. I, I you, uh, anybody who could be associated with this, it's it, 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 there's a problem, and we can't support those people because it's clear as day. And and, and again. There's more evidence. There is more evidence to support what Tara Reid is saying than there was for uh, uh, Dr. Ford in the Brett Kavanaugh case. And so this is uh, this is this just I don't care about the politics. I care about the fact that you have completely all of them have completely laid their integrity on the altar of of, of Joe Biden. Because it's not on the altar of beating Donald Trump because Joe Biden is the perfect candidate to lose to Donald Trump. Oh, the madness that we are surrounded with. Let's listen in a little more. I believe the Biden I know, and I think that he will make women proud, that he will make America proud. Does Joe Biden personally need to address this more directly and publicly? I believe his campaign has been very clear, and I believe that that is the approach that they intend to take. And I support the approach because, again, we don't want women to ever be afraid to come forward. But we also have to recognize that allegations should be investigated and that those investigations need to be borne out. Listen, getting rid of Donald Donald Trump is critical. It is critical to save lives. Right. It's not critical for just some mamsy pamsy political reason, meaningless political reasons. Right. People are dying because of the leadership of Donald Trump. In fact, we need to get rid of every Republican across this country because people are literally dying. It's a shame that we have this crisis amongst us right now. This 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 covid-19 that's in us in this country right now, which makes it all the more difficult to to honestly call out the bullshit. But, you know, I'm allergic to it, so I absolutely could not not call it out, even in the midst of us really seriously, absolutely needing to get rid of Donald Trump. It is far more damaging the damage that they are doing to women. across. And, and listen, I get it. They're women who are doing this, who are supporting us. They're putting women out here in front of it. I get it. I, I, I understand the game. I understand politics. And I know people are going to be like, oh, man, you just, you know, you're trying to speak on behalf of women. No, I'm speaking on behalf of a dude who understands like, <sighs> you know what? All I know is that men having to think three or four times. Before they do something is a good thing. Okay. Having to think, is she really telling me yes? Is she enthusiastically telling me yes? That was never a bad thing. And that's one of the things that the Me Too movement started to enshrine in our culture. And that's the very first thing that has been sacrificed on the altar of a dude whose dentures are going to fall out in the next debate. 
who's going to fall asleep like he did in that town hall with Hillary Clinton yesterday. You guys are really selling out your soul and your integrity on behalf of a man in the name of beating Trump on behalf of a man who stands absolutely no chance of beating Donald Trump because he doesn't have enough working digits to handle his mashed potatoes by himself. Shame on all of you. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show and support the Benjamin all Dixon right, show. All right, here we go. We're going to party anyway. Very special welcome to all of our newest patrons without whom this show is not possible. Very special welcome to Jake S. Thank you for becoming a patron. Alex Manning, thank you for becoming a patron. Miguel Gravel Zagira, thank you for becoming a patron. Corey Williams, thank you for becoming a patron. And Shayla Mary A. Mary, I'm just going to say A there because... Thank you for becoming a patron. You too can become a part of this prestigious. Wait a minute. Let's bop. Kind of got ahead of myself. Yeah. Uh, it's straight go go, baby. You too can become a part of this prestigious and prodigious patron family by going to patreon.com forward slash the BPD show, where you generally get twice as much content without any of the advertisements like you're going to get somewhere about right here. Welcome back to the Benjamin Dixon show. Visit us online at www.thebenjamindixonshow.com. Welcome back, everybody. All right. Um, the push to open the economy is in full effect um, and not just open the economy, but to force in labor back. Now, last week when we talked about this, I made it clear that no matter how much they force labor back, the one thing they cannot compel is our consumption. That's what we I mean, they can't really compel our our, our labor, but without us collectively striking, um, they can they they can put the pressure on. So and that's basically what's going on in Iowa. Um, uh, this is from the Iowa, Iowa governor, Kim Reynolds. She is deciding that in order to get Iowans back to work, she is going to no longer allow COVID-19 to be an excusable uh, unemployment reason. And this is the key paragraph from the USA Today. It says Iowa Workforce Development said Monday that failing to return to work out of fear of catching the coronavirus will be considered a voluntary quit, which disqualifies workers from receiving unemployment benefits. This is from um, Governor Kim Reynolds, Republican there. And then when I tell you, this is the this is the damnedest situation that we're in because we're faced with a death cult in the Republican Party who literally is fine with you dying so long as they can meet their quarterly profit margins on behalf of their masters. But at the same time, we have a party who has picked the person who is the most vulnerable to attack from from Donald Trump, the person who's going to lose to Donald Trump, not just because he's 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 getting up there in age and he doesn't have the mental uh, faculties. He does. He is suffering from significant mental decline, um, but also because his politics suck bad enough to not be distinguishable enough from Donald Trump. But even more so, he's not leading. Joe Biden is not leading the fight that will galvanize this movement. By virtue of the fact that nobody is galvanizing this movement. These are the people who need to be mobilized. They need to know that somebody's fighting on their behalf. All these people in Iowa who are now going to be forced to go back to work. Where is the Democratic opposition to this? You don't just win. Listen, I swear to God, some of these people in the Democratic establishment are intentionally doing this. But others are just so stupid as far as, as, far as how politics works. You don't win elections just by putting a body in that space. And then telling everybody, oh, we're going to do oh, blue, vote blue no matter who. That doesn't win elections. People have to be motivated to get out there and, and vote for you. And when in their, in their darkest moment right now, the people of Iowa who have lost their jobs, not to mention the 26 million people across this entire country, tomorrow it's probably going to end up 30 plus million. But in these darkest moments, nobody is standing up from them for them. Nobody is organizing. 
And when I say nobody, I'm talking about somebody running for president. Not even not even the House of Representatives. Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer over in the Senate. None of them are doing anything on behalf of these people. How can you expect a single one of them to give a damn about going to pull a lever in November when you didn't give a damn about their unemployment in April? And so we're in this situation where we've got to get rid of Donald Trump and every single Republican in this country. But where the opposition party is not an opposition party. It is a complicit party. We are led by the exact people necessary to destroy us. That's the bottom line. We are in the worst timeline imaginable. We are facing. I, I, I mean, I can't imagine. I mean, people making all of the exact, ne- exactly necessary decisions in order to destroy us. Decision after decision. And it's almost like the Republicans are like, hey, I want to see if you guys are going to rebel. Are you really going to, are you really going to let, how far are you going to let us go with this before you do something about it? Meanwhile, the Democrats are like, huh, let's eat some ice cream. The Democrats are like, you know, believe women asterisk. <laughs> we are really facing some dark times because they're really testing the limits of this, of our ability, of our ability to tolerate them. The ruling elite in this country is really pushing the envelope. Because we have nobody. There's literally nobody. And even Bernie Sanders is like, Bernie Sanders has thrown in the towel. Jeff Weaver has turned out to be a snake in the, well, people have been telling y'all about Jeff Weaver for some time. But, but even the revolution is starting to, to fade. And the people who are hurt by these policies, who are hurt the most by Donald Trump, those people, Man, they have nobody fighting on their behalf. And you expect to win an election when 30 million people are unemployed and you're not doing anything to help them. You do not understand politics unless unless your bet is to have such a depressed turnout, such a depressed turnout so that maybe 20 percent of this country shows up in November and you win power with 20 percent. That's the strategy. That's literally the strategy. Who can motivate amongst the most depressed turnout in American history? That's what the ruling elite is trying to do. Justin Amash is running... Um, he's trying to get the ticket or he has a, the, the libertarian ticket. Um, I don't have a whole lot of commentary on this. He's trying to run for president of the United States as a libertarian. Um, I don't think it's going to make, uh, don't get me wrong. The libertarians get a larger percentage than, um, than the green party, but the libertarian has a pretty solid base of people who support them every year, every four years. And, uh, it's a pretty stable number. Everyone's like, Oh, you're going to mess it up for Joe Biden. Everybody's looking for an excuse already to protect Joe Biden. Libertarians were never going to vote for Joe Biden. Okay. Libertarians were never going to vote for Joe Biden. I'm so tired. Of, I'm be honest with you guys. I have to just be honest with you. Full transparency. I'm tired of politics. I'm tired of politics. I'm tired of giving commentary on this stuff. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to miss my job. I'm going to keep doing it because I need you to keep, you know, being a patron and, and, and I still got good stuff to say, but commenting on the stupid for so long really takes its toll on you. And, uh, you know, save this pandemic. I, I would much rather be in the streets, much rather be in the streets because of the stupid, the level of stupid. I'm allergic to bullshit and stupidity and all of these disingenuous arguments from all these hacks who don't do anything. They, they know, first of all, they know nothing about politics except for how to depress the turnout and then try to win with a depressed turnout. That's, that's all they've got. But then they lie constantly, incessantly, habitually. They're goddamn liars on both sides. And in the midst of a pandemic, they're choosing all of the very things that could get the most, the maximum number of people killed. That's what they're doing. I know this is a long way to go from Justin Amash, but the, it's just the, 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 it's the straw that breaks the camel back. You know that. The stupidity of people like, oh, Justin Amash, you're going to cost Joe Biden the, the, the campaign. No, no you. Uh. <laughs> so um, this is going to be my last broadcast. No, I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm lying. Stop. I just, I, I just 
I just cannot continue to deal with all of the stupid stuff that is around us. Like at some point, well, anyway, let's listen to some music and we'll be right back. We'll make it up, we put us together. We'll make it up, we put us together. We'll make it up, we put us together. All right, so Jeff Weaver, who was a senior advisor for the Biden um, for the uh, Bernie Sanders campaign, and he was uh, in 2020, he was the campaign manager in 2016. He has launched a super PAC in order to support Joe Biden, uh, according to Shane, uh, yeah, Shane Goldmacher. He said that uh, he's spoken to Jeff Weaver, and Weaver told him um, that Bernie Sanders is not supportive of this super PAC. He also added that he certainly would prefer uh, Bernie Sanders rather. Um, would prefer that we not have done this through a super PAC um, or that that Weaver had not done it through a super PAC. Uh, So Bernie Sanders clearly distancing himself from this decision. Uh, But there have been reports on Jeff Weaver since the beginning of time, time immemorial, that he has been a significant problem in um, Bernie Sanders' camp in the campaign over the years, not only in 2020, but also in 2016 and throughout. The problem is that uh, Jeff Weaver had... uh, Bernie Sanders is ear more than anyone else because he's been with Bernie Sanders since like uh, the eighties. And sometimes it's your, it's your closest friends. It's your, it's your closest boy. It's your closest confidant. Who's the person who ends up getting you destroyed. Um, according to countless reports from, uh, I guess I could call their names, but particularly uh, black staffers with, with um, yeah, I can call their names. Marcus Farrell. He wrote several articles on it. He's been telling people about this since 2016. I mean, I remember in 2016, he was trying to tell me this and I didn't want to hear it. But then I finally sat down and listened to him. I'm like, holy shit, bro. There's there some. And, and those are some of the things. Um, uh, Jay Maul Green from Chicago. He was a part of the campaign and he left the campaign early because of some of those same exact things. I mean, people have been trying to tell folks all along that there was some serious problems. And it wasn't necessarily with Bernie Sanders. I think everyone who spoke on Bernie Sanders spoke about his integrity, but they really had a problem with Jeff Weaver. So my hope and my wish for Jeff Weaver is that he f- crashes and burns and that uh, this endeavor of his is abysmal at best uh, and that he's exposed for um, for whatever he is. But I, I know this I, I know this, that sometimes people think that they're doing the right thing and what they're doing is just batshit evil, evil. So I don't know if that's his case, but I do know other people in that orbit who would swear they're doing a good job, but their whole integrity, um, <laughs> what integrity, right? There is none. There are snakes in the progressive movement. And I think if we do anything, if we survive as a species past this pandemic, because our elected officials in America are doing everything they can to maximize the impact of it, I digress. But if we do, and we get a second go at this, Uh, I think one of the critical things in the progressive movement is going to be to purge, politically speaking, right? Um, All of the snakes in the grass in the progressive left. And from all indications, Jeff Weaver, uh, from people who's worked with him firsthand, I'm not going to have to go get to know the guy for me to learn for myself. I'm going to take the people who have worked with him um, and listen to them. Because it's the same story over and over again. And now he's launched the super PAC in order to encourage Bernie Sanders supporters to support Joe Biden, who now has shown an in, uh, I mean, the uncanny ability to get people to lay all of their integrity on the ground, lay it all aside in order to support a guy who's going to pass out and just fall asleep in the next debate. And that is who we've decided to put up against. Uh, Donald Trump here's the thing this is the last thing I'm going to say no no bonus episode for the patrons because I'm already super late with today's episode I haven't been feeling the best uh, but I digress here's the thing nobody understands more how important it is for us to get rid of Donald Trump which is why I am so angry with the Democrats because they have given Donald Trump the ammunition he needs to win a second term You don't simply win by taking a person, a body and saying, here's who you vote for. Everyone shut up and vote. You may operate like that, but the people who we need to turn those swing states into victories do not operate like that. 
And so for everyone who's coming to me and saying, Ben, we got to, you know, we got to we got to get in line and help Joe Biden. You don't understand. When Hillary Clinton picked Tim Kaine, we lost. It was already it was already written in the stars. It was over. When the Democratic Party beat picked Joe Biden, chances are there's a good possibility. I mean, and this is even in face of a pandemic. Like, I can't. <laughs> I went over the data yesterday. People aren't even looking at, at, at Donald Trump as being responsible for this. Of course, he's not responsible for the virus itself, but he's certainly responsible for how we're responding as a nation. And even in the midst of that, you still have 25 percent of Democrats who don't believe uh, that Donald Trump is responsible for the extent of this crisis. And I think it was like some 46 percent of, 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 of independents who don't believe that. And when it comes in terms of tr- in, who good God almighty. The, the poll that I gave you last week, this one is probably the most damning in terms of who do you trust? Who do you trust when it comes to COVID-19? Of course, at the top was the CDC and Dr. Fauci in the middle was Donald Trump and um, and his vice president, uh, both around by 49 percent for Donald Trump and 46 percent. If my memory serves me correctly, at the very bottom, at the very bottom was Joe Biden. Because he does not have the mental faculties enough to actually carry on a meaningful conversation about what we as Americans need to do in terms of doing press. Right. He can't even do the press to convince us. And then, two, he absolutely is not advocating for policies that would help people who have lost their jobs, lost their health insurance and are sick. So for everyone who's yelling at me like we got to do something about. So so I, 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 I guess your recommendation for people who are yelling at the computer now. I guess your recommendation is just shut up and support him. <laughs> well, one, that's not going to help him win. We've got to get Joe. Listen, at this point, if you really want to be um, if you really want to beat Donald Trump, you do put in Bernie Sanders. But if you refuse to put in Bernie Sanders, for the love of God, hell, put in Amy Klobuchar. That's my music. That's my time. Patrons, there's no bonus show today, uh, but I will be right back with bonus material tomorrow. You know how we do it. I'll make sure I make up for the lost time. I just got to let my voice rest a little more. Thank you, everybody. You've been a beautiful audience. I'll see you tomorrow. The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show and support the Benjamin Dixon show. If you like this episode, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.